Now since we went that way with it, of course we can go the other way, which is the next question. Suppose that in 1962 a country had a fertility rate of 4.54 births per woman. So that's an x. They're telling you, hey, x was 4.54. Using the linear regression equation given on the graph, what would you expect the country's life expectancy to be? Okay. I'm not sure I'm really sure why I have the rate word in there. We can just say life expectancy. I'll fix that. All right, so again, let me write this equation. It doesn't really matter where I write it. y hat equals negative 4.6711x plus 81.51. At least that's what Excel gives to us. So they're telling us that x is 4.54, so we can write negative 4.6711 times 4.54 plus 81.51, and that's pretty straightforward. I mean, we can just type that into the calculator. And again, use that negative sign because it's at the front. So negative 4.6711. Now you can either use a time symbol or you can use parentheses. So I'll just use the time symbol, times 4.54 plus 81.51 and we get 60.3. It's really important that you take advantage of the very powerful calculators that you have. So if you type the whole line like it is, the calculator will do the order of operations correctly for you, which is lovely. Now keep in mind the unit for this, it has to be years, because this was life expectancy. Now for both the last questions, if you don't have a calculator and you want to be able to find them, you can use Desmos. So for example, I can take 70.21, subtract 81.51, previous example, and just divide negative 11.3 divided by negative 4.6711, and there you have it. And then the one we just did, negative 4.6711 times 4.54 plus 81.51. So you can always use Desmos if you're, if you're relying on StatCrunch and you don't have a calculator, you can use Desmos as your calculator for doing simple things like adding and subtracting. You can see it comes up with the same answer, 60.3, right there. All right, so we get 60.3 years. Now, there was a real country that named Gabon that had a birth rate of 4.54 children per woman and a life expectancy of 39.56 years in 1962. We're going to compute, draw, and label the residual, which is the error on the graph. Hmm. Okay, so there's what we found it to be, right, which is 60.3, and then there's what it actually was. <laughs> so the residual formula is, I put the card a little bit before the horse, it's down here. You can see the residual formula is the observed y minus the predicted y hat. That's what the y hat stands for. The hat means that it's a prediction. It's not what it actually was. Y's are what it actually is. Y hats are what we predict it will be. Okay, so if I want the residual using that formula, the residual would be the true observed Y minus the predicted Y hat. Okay, so in real life, right, and that's another way you could say this. This is real life. I don't have to write it right there. Observed Y, that's real life Y. Or the other word I use for it is actual, right? So actual Y. So the actual in real life was 39.56. So that was the real life value. Minus the prediction I made which was right here. This is y hat. I even put a hat right in the formula. So it's y hat, which is 60.3. Okay, so this is y, this is y hat. It's not a super difficult calculation. You just have to get the order correct. And then what does that equal? Well, let me grab 
well, it doesn't really matter what I grab. <laughs> so if I grab Desmos, 39 point, point 0.56 minus 60.3 gets negative 20.74. Or again, if you use the calculator, same thing, 39.56 minus 60.3, right? So we get negative 20.74. Now it's going to have the same units because these are both y values. They were both years. This is the real year's life expectancy. This is the um, predicted year's life expectancy. So this is years. It has the same unit as your y's because these are both y values. All right, so we've computed it. Wonderful. Now we have to draw and label it. Hmm, not so wonderful. <laughs> okay, so I picked Gabon for a particular reason. Gabon is right here. So you can see what it actually is was 39.56. So right there, there's y, which is 39.56. That's the height it's at. Look, it's r just a touch below that 40 line, right? Because it's 39.56 years. And then our prediction was way up here. Um, let me see here. I'll just do it in purple. So straight up, vertical line, straight up hit the curve. Look, it's almost on that 60 line. Well, of course it is. So that's y hat, which was 60.3. Now keep in mind, all of these points have this issue. So this little dot right here, straight up, there's a point right there. And this little one, there's a point right there. And this one, there's a point right there. So if you go straight up or straight down to the line, you get the prediction, right? The line is where all the predictions are. It's the averages, if you will. All right, the residual is the distance between the two. It's the error. It's the amount you were off. So your residual was negative 20.74. Negative because this point is below that line. And you can see about half the dots would have a negative residual because they're below the line. And about the other half of the points would have a positive residual because they're above the line. And that's actually what makes it the least squares regression line, is that it's the line that balances out the residuals the best. Least squares stands for the squares of the residuals. They square them all to make them all positive, just like you did when you did um, standard deviation calculations. So don't worry about it. Just suffice it to say that this line is the best line for residuals. It makes the errors as small as they can be, because that's what residual is. Residual is an error, right? It's how off this point was from that point. This one down here is reality. That one on the line is your prediction. Your error is the distance between the two. Right. All right, so we've lit, drawn and labeled it on the graph. So we're good there. Now let's interpret Gabon's situation. Let's think about this for Gabon as a country. Right. So here's Gabon. And again, there's all those other countries. Rwanda's right out there. Remember, the U.S. is over here somewhere. All right, so there's Gabon. Is Gabon doing well or doing poorly? Doing poorly, right? This is life expectancy. You would like it so that people in your country live a long time. <laughs> and Gabon was having problems. Um, I believe it was in a civil war at that time, or just about to start a civil war. So things were not going well in Gabon in 1962. In a sense since turned much better. All right, so um, Gabon was doing poorly. It was actually very poorly. I mean, that's a huge gap. That's why I picked Gabon, because it's so far away from the line. The life expectancy in reality, which is the 39.56, was far below where we would expect it to be. So it's expected at that 60.3 years, and it was instead at 39.56 years. And that far below part, that's what that residual is. It was 20.74 years below where we would expect. And that's not good for a country, right? All right, some quick notes about residuals, which is that residuals use the same units for um, 
as your y values in your data set. So you can see. So it uses the same units for residual as for the y values in the data set. So I'll just highlight that. Um, again, the least squares regression line is the linear model that makes the residuals as small as they could possibly be. So that's where the term least squares regression line comes from. And we're just going to leave it at that. There's a lot more calculations going on there, but we're not going to bother with them. Now, the size of the residual can tell you how well the model is fitting the situation. Obviously, smaller residuals mean a better fit. So when you see Gabon, you can see that this was a terrible model for Gabon, but it was the best it could be come up with. But nevertheless, it wasn't great. Right. And then last but not least, the next line talks about positive residuals and negative residuals. So if you have negative residuals, it means you're below, the, the actual values are below the line, below the prediction. And if they're positive residuals, it means the actual values are above the line or above the predicted value. I'm going to write that up. and I'll pause one second and bring right back. So I just wrote that up. And then it occurred to me, I don't have to use a negative slope, so I'm going to use a positive slope here. So if it's a positive residual, that's these ones right here. These ones have positive residual because they're above the line. Negative residual would be down here, would be below the line. Now, you might think, what about ones that are exactly on the line? Well, in general, they're not exactly on the line. They may look like it, but there's always a little bit of error in there going on, having to do with decimal places, if nothing else. So almost never do we have points that are exactly, exactly on the line. Almost all points are either above or below, which means the least squares regression model is balancing out those um, two types. And that's what this is saying. The least squares regression model is the model that makes those residuals as small as they can be, and it balances the positive and negative residuals. Now, it's not exactly 50-50. It doesn't quite work like that, but it's along those lines. So it balances the positive and negative residuals also. And it has, it's just a nature of the calculation. Again, it's not, it's not that 50% are at 50%. It's, it's not quite like that, but it's close-ish. Right? It shouldn't be like 70 and 30. That's not going to happen. 